We're ready. <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> Our precious Holy Father, we thank you for the opportunity to live in this great country known as the United States of America. We thank you for the many men and women, uh, both here on American soil and abroad, who are defending our great country and the freedoms that we enjoy as American citizens. We ask that you keep each and every one of them safe and free of harm's way. We ask that you be with the many men and women in uniform here uh, in emergency services, law enforcement, fire, first responders, paramedics, ETs, as they keep us safe as we go about our daily duties and daily activities. We just thank you for the many blessings that you bestowed upon us, and in your name we pray. Amen. Do I like to ask everyone to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> At this time, I'll call to order the Tuesday, May 14th, 2019 meeting of the Hart County Board of Commissioners. Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone here. First item of business tonight will be to approve the agenda. Terry, we got any changes? Uh, I have no changes. Okay. Anybody, anybody else about any changes? Not going to a motion to approve the agenda. I'll make a motion we'll approve the agenda. We have a motion by Commissioner Teasley and a second by Commissioner Carter to approve the agenda as printed. Any more discussion? Public comment on the agenda? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is approved minutes of the previous meetings. You've got the April 23rd regular meeting and the April 30th called meeting minutes in your packet. We'll take the April 23rd regular meeting minutes first. I'll make a motion that we'll approve them regular meeting minutes. We have a motion by Commissioner Teasley. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Sayer. Any more discussion? Public comment on April 23rd? Yes. <coughs> Not all in favor, raise your right hand. I Motion carried. I wasn't here good enough to hear anything that went on. Okay. <laughs> Motion carried 3 0 with Commissioner Carter abstained. Uh, now we'll take the call meeting minutes of April 30th. Do you get a motion to approve? I'll make a motion we approve the call of meeting April 30th. have a motion by second. Commissioner Sayer, a second by Commissioner Carter. Any more discussion? Public comment on the April 30th minutes? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried 4 unanimously. Next item on the agenda is remarks by invited guests, committees, and authorities. Um, we have some very special guests here tonight that I want to recognize. Uh, first, I want to recognize uh, Ms. Deborah uh, Smith with the uh, ACCG. And a gentleman who needs very little introduction, he's well known. Uh, he's our state representative and has been for many, many, many years. Does a great job for us. He's always responsive and he returns our calls and uh, works diligently in Atlanta for us. And we're, we're grateful to have him as our state, uh, state representative, and that's Representative Alan Powell. So, you've got something you want to do tonight? I do. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm Deborah Nesbitt with the Association of County Commissioners, and we wanted to recognize Representative Powell, Chairman Powell, um, for his diligent work on behalf of counties. He is always, as you've stated, uh, he is very constituent-oriented, and uh, I have known him for many, many years and in different capacities before I even came to ACCG. Uh, and I used to have to wait while I took all his constituent calls when I would meet with him about budget. And uh, so uh, he is a very constituent oriented. Last year when he served as chairman of Public Safety and Homeland Security, he sponsored a bill to create the Georgia Emergency Communications Authority. So that revamps our 911 systems uh, here in Georgia. Uh, and that implemented on January 1. And I looked up the numbers um, for you all in, in the way of revenue, and Hart County's doing very well under that new system. So the money is beginning to flow in. It's only for two months, and it looks like there's going to be a good increase to go towards your 911 center operations. Uh, that was a tough piece of legislation to carry. It took a lot of work uh, with telecom, with all of the telephone companies and cable companies, uh, but he ushered that bill through. And so Really, the award is not just for that, it's for 
He's always there. He's always willing to listen. And he, always, and he understands local government. And we know that when we need somebody to help explain something in regards to local government, we can count on him. Plus, he always gets the bill passed. <laughs> uh, so that's another great uh, thing about working with him. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to give you this board. It's a picture of your courthouse. Um, another one to go on your wall in your office. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got quite a few of those. And we just want to thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you, Deborah. We appreciate mm -hmm. you very I appreciate much. It. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it very much. Mm -hmm. On behalf of uh, the legislature, I want to thank uh, thank all the county commissioners. Sometimes Deborah made it sound like I'm uh, always there. Well, I'm not always there because sometimes ACCG and, G and the county commissions aren't always right. <laughs> but most of the times they tend to be. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank, as a taxpayer, I want to thank the Board of Commissioners. Um, as I sat back and I watched the chairman call this meeting to order and go through things, y'all are, uh, are very much more professional than we were once upon a time when Walter and I were here. Uh, we used to meet at the courthouse. Uh, in that day and time, we used to, we were noted for some of those meetings that last hours and hours, and if you don't believe me, just consult with Walter about it because he swears he never got paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed at myself, but there's two folks that are still here. Luana, she came to work when I was the commission chairman back in 1980. Terrell was probably one of the better friends that we were back in those days. He was EMT and, uh, and he's still hanging around. Mm -hmm. so that being said, there must be something about working in uh, local government in Hart County gives people staying power. I want to thank y'all for the good job y'all do and uh, thank you for this uh, note of recognition. I'm very grateful. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on with the agenda. Uh, next item on the agenda is remarks by constitutional officer and department heads, Mr. Gordon. Nothing Okay. Uh, next item, our next person under here is uh, Ms. Brandy Shiflett with the Hart County Extension Office. Uh, So um, I was asked to come and present a quarterly report for the first three months of the year. And I kind of went through and highlighted most of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis in our office. Um, my role predominantly is 4-H programming. So I spend a lot of time in the school system working with the children, um, presenting programs that supplement and what the teachers are teaching based on their standards for fourth, fifth, and sixth grade level in science. Um, I have 39 monthly club meetings, um, 38 in school, one home school for that same age range. Um, so that's approximately 835 students that we reach. And then um, we also meet with our seventh through 12th graders as an after school program and they have to come to our office for those meetings and we meet for various things at various times. Um, one couple standouts that I want to point out is this past year I was part of a statewide grant um, called Relationship Smarts that allowed me to go into the seventh grade at the middle school and increased um, 10 more club meetings for me um, and 285 students that were reached um, and that was a promising program um, which we've just wrapped up and I'm excited to see the results that come out of that. Um, we also took children to District Project Achievement, which is their um, annual public speaking competition. In March, our 7th through 12th graders participated in it. It was their, their turn. Um, we have five going on to state competition in July. So we're real proud of those accomplishments and we have been busy reevaluating their projects and seeing what we need to do to make them stand out at the state contest. Um, our forestry judging team is going to nationals again this summer 
and we've been practicing hard getting ready for that contest and we just wrapped up our poultry judging um, judging team as well and those students um, did a great job learning about the poultry process here in the county. I'm happy to answer any other questions that you have about anything in the packet, um, but just wanted to touch on a few highlights. How many total kids participate in the 4 H program? There are 1,138 youth on my roll for this year. And y'all meet then at the 4-H a lot or at the schools? Our after-school program, our judging teams, um, our specialty events all happen at the 4-H office. <clears throat> Unless we need larger space. <laughs> Do y'all use the uh, ag building any much? Um, for our banquet. Banquets. Yes, sir. That place is nice, isn't it? So, yes, sir, it is. As far as services that the, the extension office provides, can you kind of let everybody know what all? Your, your office does for those who are watching at home or who may see this on our YouTube channel later on. Okay, so um, Extension is the um, research based arm of the university and we provide non biased research based information to the public. So anything that the public needs as far as um, taking care of um, their home, their farm, um, basic day to day nutrition. Um, taking care of family, we have resources that we can provide to them. And then, of course, my part is providing youth development programs. Um, so, homeowner lawn questions we get a lot of, gardening questions right now. Um, we've got, had questions on diabetes awareness and some recipes and things we use to help um, people um, struggling with that illness. Um, but anything that we can provide the public, um, we're happy to do so. And what's the phone number where they can reach your office? 706-376-3134. Okay. We we'll appreciate the job you do, yeah, Brandon. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate you Thank coming. you very much. I got, I got something on. Okay. <clears throat> Y'all had an awards banquet the other Monday night. We were on our way back from Savannah, so one of us couldn't be there. But I looked, I looked at the program. You had 61 people, unless I miscounted, that actually placed in first, second, third, or got on my mention out of all of that. <clears throat> and one will go to the National 4-H Conference. Yes, sir. One was third in the nation for beekeeping, a beekeeping essay. So that's pretty good. Uh, pretty good accomplishment for everybody, and I'd like to give them an applause for me that you can do that and bring all these kids into doing that. So congratulations on that. Thank you very much. <clears throat> all right, over here on this report right here, it says agricultural and natural resources. One of the things that uh, the report that I got uh, at the conference. Yes, sir. It says that it's, the Clark County ranked fourth in the number of water microbiology samples. Can you? Sure. We get a lot of questions in our office um, about their well water and is it safe for them to drink. Um, and so we will do testing through the university um, on whatever needs they might have for, for their well waters to ensure it's safe. Um, but one of the most common tests that everybody wants to run is about what we call our E. coli coliform bacteria test. And we seem to do more than any in the state, <laughs> just about. Um, it's an easy test. They just have to pick up a kit from our office. Um, our labs do charge a fee for those services, but we'll be glad to walk them through the process and do that um, to ensure everybody's safety in the county for their water. I, I appreciate you. I know that everybody up here appreciates you. Brian, coming up here and doing a short poll on what y'all are doing, what you're accomplishing. Thank you very much. Yep. No problem. Yep, Thank you, you so much. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Moving on down the agenda, county administrator's report. Oh, I have none tonight, sir. That, okay. <clears throat> um, chairman's report. Uh, the only thing I got is so we'll go through the uh, financial dashboards. Uh, we'll walk through that right quick. As we do every month, uh, the first meeting of each month, we go through our financial dashboard. 
kind of give uh, the taxpayers a scenario of how the county is performing from a budgetary standpoint. Um, we track this by fiscal year. Um, our actual revenues and expenditures for a balanced budget are one million twenty-two thousand one hundred seventy dollars. Actual revenues for the month of April came in at seven hundred eight thousand five hundred thirty-eight dollars. You'll notice it's red. Uh, it's red because it's greater than three percent of the target. Uh, the delta is, uh, and there's a reason for that, and that's property taxes. And if you go back and look at November, December, January. Um, we were way over our target um, of a million twenty-two thousand one hundred seventy dollars, and we'll look at the breakdown here momentarily. Uh, expenses for the month of April was yellow, uh, one million fifty-one thousand three twenty-five. Uh, if you go back and look at the previous uh, six months, uh, only one month has been above budget. The expenses have been significantly below ever since. Uh, looking at our Main revenue drivers, uh, real property tax, um, that's property taxes due uh, December the 20th. Uh, you can see that the target is $462,000 per month. That's what we should average, and we're well above that. Um, however, the month of April uh, came in at $86,321. This is just a, the leftover stuff, the late folks are paying things late. Uh, it could be some bankruptcies of those kind of things. Um, but if I can look in December and, and January, um, you know, we were we were strong. Uh, LOST is a one cent local sales tax. It's used to roll back the millage rate. Our goal there is $179,000 per month. Uh, for the whole year, we exceeded that goal. Uh, and for the month of April, we come in at $210,161. Uh, EMS fees, uh, target is $91,700 per month. Uh, you can see we came in in April at $113,422 in the green. And then our last uh, main revenue driver is a vehicle title fee, uh, and target is $56,000 per month. It's been green the whole fiscal year thus far. It came in at $80,830, and as I've said, every month of uh, this year, there's a lot of people buying cars out there because uh, that's directly where that's coming from. So overall, the uh, county is in really good shape uh, with this fiscal year. Our uh, revenues are about 33% above budget, primarily because of the fact that the property taxes, that number will continue to go down. Our expenses are 6% below uh, the targeted budget number. So, so far, a solid year, um, and we hope to see that continue um, as we move forward. Any questions on the financial report? <coughs> if not, we'll move on into Commissioner's report. Uh, Commissioner Oglesby from District 1 is not with us tonight. Uh, Commissioner's report, District 2. Uh, I just want to say I appreciate the job that um, law enforcement, EMS, fire department, and all county employees are doing. I appreciate it. Okay. All we got. District 3. Yeah, I attended a, uh, a meeting the other night that explained a little bit about the voting machines and how they're going to be processed and I think our election board is going to try to put some kind of information a video or or whatnot together to kind of uh, inform our community on how these vote machines are going to work uh, I think it's going to be a fascinating process I think that it's a, a, a turn to the right direction I but the most of all, if, if you have not registered to vote, register to vote. We need to um, be uh, exercising our constitutional right in voting in, in every election that we have in this county. <coughs> That's all I have. Okay, thanks. District 4? Yeah, I got a few things. Uh, how about coming on the EMS station? Uh, we we'll finished up the wiring in it. Uh, the network wire and everything this week uh, got quotes out for the septic system uh, if we could set six men we'll start the driveway and stuff so that's where it's at so it's making progress yeah a little bit slowly slowly we had we discussed a paving trial a while back we any closer to knowing anything on there they still uh, busy well 
on the uh, industrial part road is what we had discussed. Dave's fixing it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I forgot about that. I guess. All right. I've I had a person tell me they've been seeing a lot of speed limit signs going up in Hawkeye or some speed limit signs going up. Y'all know anything about that? Well, I didn't know nothing about it. We were replacing some that's faded, but other than that, I don't know of any new ones going up. Well, you're replacing some. Maybe yeah. that's what they're talking about. Maybe they just uh, And I think uh, James is going to be putting some up Saturday for the city of Byersville. On, on the way we usually do it, he'll put them up and we'll build for it. But they're putting up some new ones. We haven't done anything but replace one. Okay. Thank you. That's all I got for you, Jeff. Okay. Uh, moving into the old business part of the meeting, uh, item 12. 12A, uh, first item of business here will be to amend Exhibit A of the go-through truck ordinance to add a section of Andrew Floyd Road and the entire part of McCurley Road. Uh, the part of Andrew Floyd Road that would be added would be from Red Wine Church Road to Floyd Road to uh, Farm Road. Did I put Floyd? Yeah, you got Floyd I mean, as Farm. farm. <laughs> I knew that didn't look right. Uh, can I get a motion that we take this as a second reading? Uh, it'll take three readings before this becomes official, so we we'll take it tonight as second reading. I'll make a motion. Have a motion by Commissioner Tease. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Commissioner Sayer. Any more discussion? Public comment on this item? I see a deal with McCurdy. It's already uh, in the orders, but three readings, don't you? You've got to have three readings this time. It's already in the order. McCurdy. Yeah, or, or McCurley. RC made the motion at the last meeting they had that in. That was, in, that was included in the, it's, the it's motion. Already in the only, it's only the only exhibit A. Okay. You might want to check it. We'll, we'll still move forward with it just in case if it's a typo. Okay, I have a motion by Commissioner Tease and a second by Commissioner Sayer to uh, take this as a second reading of amending exhibit A of the No Through Truck Ordinance to add the section of Andrew Floyd Road uh, from Red Wine Church Road over to. Um, Farm Road and then uh, McCurley Road. Any more discussion? Public comment on this item? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. <coughs> Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is a project our county administrator has worked diligently on and spent quite a bit of time and is to be commended for his efforts on the radio upgrade uh, to the digital radio system. Um, Terrell, I knew you got a breakdown in here of the percent uh, cost sharing, but I'll let you present this because you spent a lot of time on it. We appreciate your efforts. And uh, well, I appreciate it about cooperation with the school system and the city and, and everybody else. Uh, basically, what this is, to just to kind of give you uh, a reminder of where we had, I got uh, permission from them several months ago to, to start checking into this and getting prices from uh, Motorola to set up a digital radio system countywide that everybody would share. Uh, we, and again, we, we, we've done it. It took a long time. We had a lot of engineering done to see what kind of sites we need and where we need to add or take away or whatever on the sites we presently have. Uh, we, came, we came up with we're pooling everybody's radio with about 480 radios, uh, what we normally operate on. So we sized the system with, through the engineering, we got six sites right now with the, with the analog system. We can we can drop down to five sites digital with the digital system, um, and we figured all of the the material parts and radios and the labor into the system cost, and in the system cost we all share in the system the systems cost in the county, the school system, the city. Uh, and, and that's the breakdown of percentages. And that was figured by how many radios each, each agency or whatever had. We don't know the percentage that way to, to cost share on it. Now, the individual radios, we see that separate list, but they're bought by the individuals because they go in individual apartments. Uh, of course, county had the most. Uh, so we, we pay the bulk of the, the cost of the system. But there's the breakdown on it and the contributions and the payments. The whole system running radios and everything running $641,643. The system cost out of that number is $369,321.14 that we're sharing by those percentages that the county said in 1.41, uh, Board of Education 18.21, the city's 
uh, in order to break down the cost. And uh, the payments are made as the system is established. When this takes over the month, it hopefully will be done the first year. Uh, and, and there's the, the, uh, the, the breakdown. The school system agreed to go forward last night. The city manager and all city departments are, are in with it. They got to, to make it official. They have to go to the city council meeting first next month to get the official. But I don't want any disagreements with it. Uh, so what I'm looking for tonight is, is authorization to sign uh, the start. Uh, see, S S O D. It's uh, something of work where they start the actual work equipment. Uh, what will happen? We'll fill out a PO. Everything's in the board of commissioners' name. We bought it one spot where we got volume discounts. That knocked about a couple of hundred bucks of radio off, and, and, and it was a good bit of savings there. Uh, so what we're looking for tonight is uh, permission to go ahead, the chairman to, to sign a PO for the, amount, the full amount, and to be paid out over those payments with contributions from the board of education and the city hall to us to recoup the. Uh, to re reimburse our the payment on it. I'll make I, a motion. That, I'll, I'll, I'll ask any questions you might have got. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I mean, if anybody got any questions. Okay. Yeah, must, I'll must. make that a motion, Chairman. Sign the invoice for the amount. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Say and a second by Commissioner Teasley authorizing me to sign the PO. Uh, <coughs> also, a statement of work. You want to put that in there? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, any more discussion? Public comment? Yeah, I got something I'd like to say. Okay, go ahead. It does good for the taxpayers in this county to understand you got a, three entities in here that's working together to try to save the taxpayer money and do what's right for all of them. I think that sure. well, yeah, you, and you I, need I, to pat on the back for getting it. Well, it ain't me, it's everybody. I uh, understand that, but yeah. you, you, you And, and you we, all, we all work together on everything. Uh, yeah, sometimes we can't agree on a certain thing, but we still work together. I appreciate it. I think yeah. I think all the taxpayers in this county should appreciate it too. Okay. That's all I've got to say, Mr. Chair. Okay. I have a motion and a second. <clears throat> uh, motion by Commissioner Sayer, second by Commissioner Teasley. More discussion. All in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Uh, that concludes old business. Move into new business. First item would be the 2020 health insurance. Um, we've got some. Updates for us as far as proposals? Uh, yes, yeah, I've, I've included in the package uh, the numbers in, in a promotion from my, uh, Andrew, our uh, representative. Uh, we've got it. It looks like to stay where we have what we got is, is a 11 percent increase. Uh, we looked at other plans. The price is about the same. Only thing that changed it really is. Uh, some of the deductibles go up. Um, so our recommendation is, is to stay with what we got at the 11 percent increase. Um, and he's still in negotiations, is he? Yeah, he's still negotiating. 11 percent worst, worst, worst case, case scenario. Uh, we're shooting for half of that, but you know how that goes. Last time he did that, they, they was uh, he reduced it because he thought it was going to be higher than it was, and it come out lower, didn't it? Yeah. 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 And we've actually had a pretty good year. Yeah, we have. We have. Uh, our numbers is, is, is in 80, 85 percent uh, cost versus uh, premium. So hopefully you've got something to argue with. But it's got to be renewed by January 1st, or even going ahead and get it approved now. So I, I'm sorry, June 1st. June. So do we need to take any action tonight? It's going kind to of, kind of be hard. We don't know the number. We can not wait till the... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll table some next week. Maybe, maybe he'll have us a final. I was hoping he's going to have to me by the day, but we haven't got it yet. You can get a motion to table this to the next meeting. I'm so a motion that we table this to the second. next meeting. Mm -hmm. a motion by Commissioner Teasley and a second by Commissioner Carter. Any more discussion? What comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation for National Safe Boating Week. I think we got a gentleman back here that's going to speak with us. If you come forward. Good evening. Good evening. First off, I'd like to thank all the commissioners for the privilege of coming here and speaking to you again. I mm -hmm. think this is my third time now. 
And I want to congratulate everybody on the way you guys said the pledge. My division commander will just fall over when I tell him about it. You caught me completely flat-footed because I used to put that pause in there, you know, <laughs> stay in sync with everybody else. But uh, I'm representing the Coast Guard on Lake Hartwell, and National Safe Boating was coming up starting this Saturday. When we try to get the message out the best we can, people to be aware, to, to pay attention, to be safe, to take uh, boating safety courses, wear your protective equipment, life jackets, things like that. The water's up, the lake is beautiful, it's going to be a gorgeous year out there, and, and please, let's keep it accident free as much as we can. And in the long term, that's, that's going to help us in terms of not having to have so much patrolling and presence and things like that on the lake. It's going to save us all money as well. But, and the, the kind of equipment that's out there today for kids and stuff is, is amazing. There, there really are some wonderful stuff out there. It looks cool. You know, it's comfortable. It, it, it's really great. There's no excuse not to, to take advantage of the things we can do to plan for the activity, skiing and things like this. You know, there's, there's danger. It's inherent to a lot of the things that we do. But the actions that we take to mitigate those dangers are what give us a safe experience and very, very minimum amount of troubles. That's really about all I had to say. Uh, like I said, we're on Lake Hartwell. Uh, you can find us through CG Ox, that's coastguardauxiliary.org. Uh, we teach boating safety classes. Power Squadron does on the lake. Uh, DNR does on the lake, both Georgia and here in South Carolina. So there's really no excuse not to. Any of your children under 16 in South Carolina have to have the boating safety course if they're going to operate a vessel. Anyone born after January 1st, 1998 in Georgia has to have a boating safety card, period, to operate a vessel on the lake. Hopefully South Carolina's going to get on board and catch up with us. But that's all I have to say. And once again, I really, truly appreciate the privilege of coming here and speaking to you. Thank you. We, we appreciate what y'all do. Yeah, you mm -hmm. Well, we, we try. We're out there every weekend. <laughs> I'm going to read the proclamation that uh, we've got here uh, for National Safe Boating Week. For nearly 100 million Americans, boating continues to be a popular recreational activity. From coast to coast and everywhere in between, People are taking to the water and enjoying time together boating, sailing, paddling, and fishing. During National Safe Boating Week, the U.S. Coast Guard and its federal, state, and local safe boating partners encourage all boaters to explore and enjoy America's beautiful waters responsibly. Safe boating begins with preparation. The Coast Guard estimates that human error accounts for 70% of all boating accidents and that life jackets would prevent nearly 85% of boating fatalities. Through basic boating safety procedures, carrying life-saving emergency distress and communications equipment, wearing life jackets, attending safe boating courses, participating in free boat safety checks, and staying sober when navigating, we can help ensure boaters on America's coastal, inland, and offshore waters stay safe throughout the season. National Safe Boating Week is observed to bring attention to the important life-saving tips for recreational boaters so that they can have a safer, more fun experience out on the water throughout the year. Whereas on average, 650 people die each year in boating related accidents in the U.S. 76% of these fatalities are caused by drowning. And whereas the vast majority of these accidents are caused by human error or judgment and not by the boat, equipment, or environment, environmental factors. And whereas a significant number of boaters who lose their lives by drowning each year would be alive today had they worn their life jackets. Therefore, the Hart County Board of Commissioners do hereby support the goals of the Safe Boating Campaign and proclaim May 18th through May 24th, 2019 as National Safe Boating Week and the start of the year-round effort to promote safe boating. In witness thereof, I urge all those who boat to practice safe boating habits and wear a life jacket at all times while boating. And then they'll have a signature of me as chairman if the board approves it. So. We appreciate it. Can I get a motion to approve the proclamation? I'll, I'll make the motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Carter and a second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? So go ahead. 
<clears throat> do y'all have statistics? Do y'all keep statistics for Hartwell Lake? Uh, no, we don't keep them specific for Hartwell Lake, and it would probably have to be broken out from both South Carolina and Georgia DNR statistics okay. and compiled, and then there, there could be crossovers between them. I know that just from my own experience the last five years of patrolling that lake, it, accidents and unfortunately fatalities have been going up pretty quickly. Um, one thing we're having a lot of issue with now is the prevalence of these inexpensive paddle boards and kayaks. So uh, we want to play, uh, jet skiers are kind of off the hook now because paddle boards have, have passed them in terms of, of danger and accidents. So, you know, it's, it's an ongoing effort, continuously ongoing effort. And these, these things, people can buy them and just go out without any preparation, any knowledge of what they're doing, at least until somebody pulls them over and gives them a ticket. Are they not texting while they're doing that, are they? Pardon? <laughs> I said they're not texting while they're doing that, are they? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen that yet, but I'm sure it happens. Yeah. It sure it happens. In fact, the Coast Guard has come out with their own ironclad rules about texting and answering. We have to stop the boat just to answer a phone call. So. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Uh, thanks. We have a motion in a, by Commissioner Carter and a second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion or public comment? If not, all in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Motion carried unanimously. Next item on the agenda is item 13C, tax levy resolution for the Hart County Board of Education and uh, the Mr. general Chairman, obligation bonds. I believe you have a copy of the resolution that is required for adoption. As you know, uh, in Georgia, the local elected school board is responsible to fashion a budget sufficient for school operations and to establish a millage rate sufficient to support that. The Board of Commissioners is responsible for setting the millage rate uh, to create that level of funding. The same thing is true with respect to general obligation bonds. The Board of Education has the absolute discretion to determine whether or not uh, it, this should be done or should be done in this fashion. And then they present that to the uh, Board of <coughs> Commissioners for uh, actually ordering or enacting the tax levy. Uh, Corey Kirby is here uh, on behalf of the Board of Education, and I'm sure he'll uh, be able to answer any questions if you have any. Okay. Um, basically, what we're here to do tonight is to adopt this resolution. It's been approved by the voters to the SPLOS acts, and if you want to come forward, Mr. Kirby, Ms. Coffey, you want to? Thank you. School I appreciate it. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. The, uh, the resolution is in front of you. I don't think I could explain it any better than what Mr. Gordon did. Um, it does uh, provide for uh, the uh, issuance and, well, actually the, the authority and uh, levying of a uh, bond millage. We won't use it unless we actually have it, but under the Constitution, when we issue G general obligation bonds, we're required to come before you and have you all levy the tax for us. Um, but again, it won't happen unless the uh, SPLOS funds are not sufficient to make the principal and or principal and interest payment on the bonds. It's a maximum of $5 million uh, dollars in general obligation debt. And we are uh, very happy to report that we were able to get it at 1.67% interest rate. So I think the, the Board of Education and the school district have been very conservative in uh, their issuance of debt and would uh, respectfully request that you all uh, approve this resolution so that the board can uh, move forward with issuing the, the, uh, the, the debt. So one question here, the, the interest schedule that we're seeing that's part of the uh, resolution was at 5.5 percent. That's a not to exceed. It's at, it's actually at, we sold it at one point. These, uh, these six, figures seven. that the interest is figured at is at 5.5 percent. Is that right? It would be a not to exceed interest right. rate. You may not have, uh, mine is, is actually at 1.67, but it, regardless, either way, it's a, it's a not to exceed interest rate of five and a half. Good news is we sold for much less than that at, at 1.67 percent. Okay. 
All right. Could I get a motion to allow me to sign this uh, on behalf of the Board of Commissioners? I'll make a motion. Second. I have a motion by Commissioner Sayer, a second by Commissioner Carter. Any more discussion? Public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. On behalf of the district and the board, thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. Walter, have you got the resolution? Or I believe Mr. Kirby has that. Yeah, I just okay. need to miss the one. Okay. All right. I'll take care of it just as soon as the meeting's over with. Uh, next item on the agenda is item 13D, credit for experience from EMS. Uh, Terrell has hired a EMT, EMT one or EMT, EMT, EMT intermediate. I'll get it right in a minute. Um, they'll be moving from part-time to full-time. She has eight years experience. Uh, he requested to give four years of credit for the experience and it will move uh, from entry level at grade 10 to entry level grade 10 plus for the four years. So I could get a motion that we so approve moved. and make this retroactive to the higher date. Yeah, she went full time as pay period, I think. Yeah. Second. Motion by Commissioner Carter, second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? Any public comment? Not all in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carried unanimously. That concludes all the business tonight. Uh, the Board of Commissioners, we move into the next item on the agenda is public comment. If somebody would like to come and address the board, if you'll come to the podium, state your name. No one for public comment. Have you a motion that we adjourn? I'll make a motion we adjourn. A motion by Commissioner Sayer and a second by Commissioner Teasley. Any more discussion? All in favor, raise your right hand. Meeting adjourned. Mm -hmm.